I love my brick, Rick. Future's 8-bit really have been prolific recently, and there's another game that's been released on their 499 range. It's Brick Rick Graveyard Shift for the Spectrum 128. You may remember I reviewed the original Brick Rick game in a roundup of CPC games, but this is an all new game coded by Juan Martinez. So loading this in on my plus two, and it comes on this attractive blue tape in a standard cassette shell, and a very nice card inlay. Stun the enemies so they can't hurt you and then kick them by just touching them. You can stun them by using your bricks or by hitting them with other enemies, causing a chain reaction. Once all the enemies have been disposed of, get in the elevator to the next level. Controls are keyboard joystick and that's Kempston or Sinclair. There's a very attractive loading screen as well that avoids color clash. So here we go, brick brick, graveyard shift and a jolly tune plays. And there's a kind of a track mode with the baddies running around. It's a Halloween-y type style game. So on to stage one. There we go. I throw my brick, you got a brick you throw at the enemies that can only go a very limited distance and you either touch them or kick them. Now this is a vast improvement from the original Brick Rick game where you had to just kick enemies for that second touch which could result in things going wrong. That, that went wrong there. You had to be very close and then you had to kick them, which especially if enemies were overlapping could get a little bit difficult. Now all we've got to do is touch them. But that aside, the original is a very, very good game. Don't by no means think I'm complaining about the original Brick Rick, but this, this new method makes much more sense. Right, that's the elevator at the end of level one. And on to level two. As we get into later levels, I'm going to blank out the passwords. Just because it's kind of spoilers, I suppose, isn't it? But level two, I won't bother. I think we can assume everyone's going to be able to do the first few levels. Right, so there's four pumpkin men running around. Throw my brick. You have an infinite supply of bricks. I don't know where Rick puts them. Or I've died there. I wonder if the brick goes slightly further than the original game as well. I haven't got it to hand to check at the moment. Right, so oh, you can't go through there, so... You can't go through platforms. You can only jump down at the edge when allowed, but you can jump up onto platforms. Right, that's him done. And there's a timer on each level. 20 seconds to go there. And it's a bit, a bit like Rodland if you don't... Uh, the timer expires because things come onto the screen and start chasing after you or bandy comes on the screen like all right on to level seven and we suddenly got bats bandies can drop bonuses he dropped a hamburger which gives me points but they can drop things like dynamite that will stun all the enemies on the screen gotta watch those bats gotta watch those bats gotta watch oh no how do I deal with the bats? Was let's throw bricks at them? Yeah, I do. Same deal. Touch them. What you want to try and do is create a chain reaction, because if a stun baddie hits another baddie, um, it can either stun them or, or bump them off as well. And there's skeletons running around now. Oh. Lucky, I thought that pumpkin man was going to come after me. Then they're all no. right. Jump down, yes, stunned him. Right, touch him. It's much better just touching them, it really is. I hadn't thought it was a huge problem in the original game, but now I've played it like this, I don't think I can go back to the original way of having to actually just get up close and kick them. That's level seven done. 33 seconds to spare. I like the splash of colour, uh, it, but it avoids colour clash. You get a little bit of it over Rick's helmet there as you go over the green bits, but it's just spot colour that works very, very well. It means it the game isn't 
monochrome, but there's plenty of colour on the screen. Well, yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five colours going on, I think, here. Well, that should bump him off. Now, what we've got to do is hopefully... Oh, very lucky there. You do have to watch for how long you've stunned the baddies for, because they will come back to life. You're not seeing the password for that. And that's the good thing about the game. It has a password system, so you can re-enter the game at any at any later stage just by writing down your password and coming back to back to it. And now the game starts to ramp it up with more baddies on the screen. These Frankenstein monsters. And more keep on emerging from the doors. Keep away from the door when the light's flashing because, well, more baddies are about to emerge, basically. It's all very good fun. And I know there's so many other games like this and you might say it's not anything particularly original here but i can't express to you how much fun this game is and how well implemented it is the collision detection is absolutely bang on game over but not to worry i've got the code so we can go to stage 22. I got some oh yeah, yeah that wasn't too clever and these baddies can teleport around so you've really got to watch it. I think they always teleport one level down rather than up. So you, you can predict what the baddie's behaviour is going to be. So you just need to watch out. There's still more appearing. One of the power-ups you can get that I really like because of the icon is an hourglass that looks like the old uh, Windows 3 weight icon. I don't know if that's um, intentional or not but that will give you extra time because sometimes some of these levels can be very tight. Ah, oh, there you go, bottom left there. See, that's the old Windows 3 weight logo uh, icon, isn't it? Didn't need it, but if I had needed it, that would have taken me back up to, I think, 60 seconds. Stage 23. So the game just gradually ramps up and introduces new things. And the baddies become a, a little bit more aggressive each time. That's game over. And stage 31. There are 50 levels in all in the game. And no, they're all, they're all very kind of similar setup. You're not going to be finding anything radically different between the levels. But it's just that gradual ramping up. These baddies can drop bombs. So you need to watch that and keep away from the bombs. There we go, that's cleared. All right, it's really getting tough now. That little guy there, he drops bombs and it becomes quite difficult to... The only gripe I have with the game is sometimes there's a lot of action happening in one area and baddies are overlapping and you're overlapping baddies. It can be a little bit difficult to see what's going on with this palette. But I guess that's unavoidable on the spectrum. I know we're not even halfway through the year yet, but I think Brick Rick might just be my game of 2021. It's not doing anything new. It's not doing anything innovative. But what it is doing, it's doing really, really well. And the game's fun. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's really, really fun. And it's fair, the collision detection is spot on. The graphics are attractive. The improved way of killing off the bandies just by touching them is a vast improvement, which I didn't even realize the game needed until I played this. I liked Brick Rick on the CPC hugely, but after playing this, I'm not sure I'll be going back to that version because this is just such a step up.
And it's the little touches, it's the improvements in gameplay. Like I mentioned, it's the password system. The password system, goodness me, why can't more people put password systems into their game so you can just jump to the level? I know it's a modern thing, but we do need some modern things, modern improvements in our games from time to time. I really, really like this game. And the fact you can buy it for just 4 dollars in 2021, which, inflation adjusted, is exactly the same as a 199 game would cost you in the late 80s. I've said this before, I've got no idea how the future was 8-bit can make any money at all selling these for a fiver. It's a fantastic game, packaged up like you bought your budget games in the 1980s. I can't recommend it enough.